uh, Princess Pansa Nasrata, um, a member of the Imperial House of Ethiopia. He studied uh, at the University of Tübingen uh, and the University of Cambridge. He holds a PhD in Ethiopian history from the University of Frankfurt. He has published uh, several books, which include the etiquette bestseller, Manners, King of Kings, The Triumph and Tragedy of Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia, and most recently, African Exodus, Migration and the Future of Europe. Since 1983, Lula Stawson has been working as a consultant for African and Middle Eastern Affairs. He is a, a, a civic activist, is a founder in Germany of the first human rights group in Ethi uh, for Ethiopia and the Society for the uh, Preservation and Promotion of Ethiopian Culture. Prince uh, Asosan is, I should mention, uh, a recipient of several notable awards, including the Walter Shield Prize from the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Listros Award for the Advancement of Young Ethiopians in Education, and the Jacob uh, Green Prize for the German Language, the first non-German by birth to receive this award. He is muted. Can you can you hear me now? Now, yes. That's wonderful. Dear Chairman Dr. Erkoyima, distinguished panelists, honorable guests, and my dear fellow Ethiopians. Thank you so much indeed, Ethiopia Inlet, for inviting me to be here today. It's a great honor to speak in this august forum. And I dare say, it is the lack of Ethiopian, Eth Ethiopianness that has caused us all these problems in the past years. And I sincerely hope that you will go on preaching the virtues of Ethiopianness and that sooner or later we all Ethiopians will realize that whatever and whoever our fathers were, we all stem from the same womb called Ethiopia. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a, indeed a great pleasure for me to attend this international virtual conference on why Western reactions to the current crisis in Ethiopia has been so harsh and unfair. And thank you, Professor Berhanu, for introducing me. Allow me now to briefly outline some of the reasons why Ethiopia is indeed vulnerable to crisis. There are undoubtedly external and internal reasons for this vulnerability. The internal factors leading to this fragile state of affairs can be probably found in our country's recent history. It could be said that ever since the 1960 coup d'etat against the imperial government, Ethiopia has been prone to some kind of a crisis or the other, which with a few years of peace in between, has been plaguing us for over 60 years. Ladies and gentlemen, I feel 
that this was due to the fact that we never used the opportunities that arose to really change the fundamental structures of the Ethiopian state in order to achieve a truly democratic society. The imperial administration unfortunately did not read the signs on the wall after the coup d'etat of General Mengistu and failed to transform the system of absolute monarchy into a constitutional one. After the demise of the imperial rule, Mengistu's military dictatorship brought only misery to our people. And after the departure of Mengistu Hailemaria, our hopes were very high that we had finally learned from our mistakes and that a true democratic state will be established in Ethiopia. However, the vicious Derg was succeeded by the racist TPLF, replacing the primacy of unity with an obsession for ethnocentricity and reimagining Ethiopia as a collection of linguistic groups rather than individual citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, since 2018, we have a Prime Minister who has given us assurances that he wishes to reconcile and find a common ground between unity and diversity and between the country's past and its future. Let us hope that this great promise will actually take place and will be fulfilled after the elections have taken place and that the present state of affairs which is totally unbearable like the killings in Walegga, Benishangul, Walaita, Northern Shoa and other regions of Ethiopia will never happen again. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me say a few words about the external factors that have contributed immensely to the fact that Ethiopia has been a fragile state for quite some time. Also here, Ethiopia's long history does play an important role. And there are certain facts which we Ethiopians have to accept. For example, that there are Western states that have always envied the sheer existence of Ethiopia as a nation state for three millenniums. They never could accept that Christianity was introduced to Ethiopia many decades before it was accepted in the majority of the European countries. Above all, the existence of Ethiopian statehood since time immemorial was also contrary to their long-held beliefs that nation-building was an art in which only Europeans exalted and Africans could only envisage the rule of tribal chieftains. That is why they made tribalism a European weapon of colonialism. They were well aware in those days where Africa 
was being colonized, which tribe was at war against which one. And they offered their support to one of them in form of gifts and military armaments. Ladies and gentlemen, whilst the European colonialists were carving up Africa, here was Ethiopia chasing out the invader at the, bottle, at the Battle of Adwa, which did not make us dearer to Western governments. I would like to share a very important po point in my life with the audience today. During my studies at the University of Tübingen, I used to attend the classes of a very famous German political scientist who was a specialist on Africa. He loved Africa, and I had the honor of being befriended with him in later years. He was indeed an admirer of our country, and I shall never forget what he used to tell me in those days. I quote, you Ethiopians should be, should always be careful to forge alliances with the Western world. They make you feel comfortable in their embrace due to your geostrategic structure, but I can assure you that they will never trust you because they have never forgiven you for what you did to them after the Second World War. First, first of all, you always gave them a tough time since you joined the United Nations in 1945 and demanded the immediate decolonization of the African continent at every session. Then, you went and brought man whom they saw as a terrorist called Nelson Mandela with an Ethiopian passport to your country, trained him and sent him back to South Africa so that he should help overthrow the white minority government. That was not enough for you. Then you joined the non-aligned movement, making yourself unpopular with the Western countries who thought you were untrustworthy. Finally, you gathered all the African countries together to found the Organization of African Unity, which became another headache to Western governments. But let me tell you, most of all, you Ethiopians will never be forgiven for being the beacon light of all black people in this world who see you as their primary source to teach them that they should see themselves as equals to their fellow white human beings. As I was warned by my teacher, the way our Western friends have treated us in the past couple of months has not come to me as a big surprise. As long as we can adopt a system of trust, credibility and inclusivity in our country, I can assure you there is little the West can do to dismantle the Ethiopia which we cherish. Should we, however, allow ethnic hatred and disunity to become the order of the day, the very survival of Ethiopian nationhood will definitely be at stake. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us no longer depend on external factors to change our present predicaments. And let us brace ourselves to the duty of opening a new era for our people with a new constitution 
where ethnicity will no longer play a vital role as a fundamental principle of state organization. The future political development of our country will depend on the trust of the population in an honest and efficient government and the economic success of our state. May the Almighty help us to create a new, truly democratic federation where justice will reign supreme and where all the 120 different ethnic groups who live in Ethiopia can indeed live in peaceful coexistence under the motto unity in diversity and diversity in unity. Thank you very much.